Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome back to another video. We're still going to be looking at the Steam Deck today. So I hooked it up via a USB hub through HDMI, which is actually working pretty well. Um, it does require, you know, it to be powered through the device as well, or at least I think it does. That seems to be my experience so far. And yeah, I thought we'd just go through some of the software in a bit more detail. I sort of didn't really have a chance to do that in my previous video where I did my impressions but um, I was managed I did manage obviously to run through a couple of the bits but I just thought if we could get it if I could get it working through HDMI it would be a bit of a, a nicer experience and I'll just go through <clears throat> all the separate bits and we'll have a little bit of a chat about it really um, just so you can see what is available so when I first uh, got the uh, Steam Deck, it came with Proton 6.3-8. We're now on Proton 7.0-1. I'm not actually too sure <laughs> what the difference of there is. There wasn't any patch notes that was provided to me offhand, and I've not looked it up. But uh, I imagine probably just a big step up in the uh, compatibility with several games. So um, I have noticed that there is actually really decent compatibility. I'm still downloading my games, and that's why I just downloaded No Man's Sky, which I believe is a playable one, which is quite interesting. Uh, you can obviously check for updates. I'll have a look, see if there is one. Oh, there is an update. Well, there you go for the Steam client. That's fine. We'll do that in a bit. Um, I've enabled developer mode just... It's obviously just a toggle, um, just so I can see what's going on in the OS builds and, and everything else. As I mentioned before in one of my previous videos, the one I had when I first got my Steam client was done on the 27th of February, which is the day after, or two days after, um, I paid for the device. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if those who get theirs next week have the March 1st or 2nd one on there as well. And then, yeah, just so you can have a look at the... At the rest of the of the details, if you are interested, uh, internet. I don't think as much in in there. Um, yeah, just pick your pick your internet connection, um, and then notifications. So stuff that you want to see, stuff you don't want to see. I've not actually changed any of this yet. So yeah, I don't have any friends anyway, so that's not <laughs> not a big deal. Uh, display brightness, brightness. Oh, that doesn't make a difference on here, does it? No, I've left it on adaptive anyway, and it's been actually all right now. Um, although I haven't tried using the night mode. And yeah, haven't had a really too much of a chance to play around with this one as of yet, but I'm sure I will do when I have a bit more bit more chance. Audio settings, like I say, not done anything with that. I haven't tried connecting up a Bluetooth device to it. That will be something I will do. Um, so controller, so whether it's got rumble or steam haptics, I actually haven't done the test either, but um, I don't have it. Um, it's literally across the other side of the room at the minute. So yeah, I'm just using a wireless mouse and keyboard through the hub. So not through the USB. Um, and then you can pick how, how strong the haptics are. You can turn them off, which I think is a good, a good option. And you can also change your um, keyboard theme. Hopefully they add some more as we go along because uh, there's just those four at the minute, um, the, the original one. And then I think one you got for, and then I think, yeah, the other three you got for pre-ordering or something like that anyway. Um, friends and chats, so that's just be able to amend your friend list stuff and then we've got um, your normal download options obviously this is all in in steam as well anyway and then sharing your library on the device which would be pretty good if you're sharing between more than one person um, and then remote play to link up your uh, steam link I've got my other I've got my main computer hooked up because I did some streaming on there um, the storage system works really well looks exactly like the steam libraries in your in your normal steam library it does have separate uh, entries for the different Proton versions, and I believe you shouldn't get rid of the older ones because some of them rely on different ones or something. Um, so, yeah, at the minute in my internal drive, I've got Elden Ring and Elix 2 installed on there. So they're the like, main ones I guess I'm playing at the minute. Um, and then I've just been downloading everything else to a new micro SD card I've got, which is 512. And I do also have the a 256 gigabyte SD card where I've downloaded all the Bethesda games. So I've got one for my Bethesda games and then one for everything else, basically. Um, and yeah, it works seamlessly. You pop one out, put one back in, and it works perfectly, which I don't think is a given. I was a bit concerned as to whether there'd be like a huge initialization time. We never had to rediscover all the files again, but uh, it's really quick. So that's really good news. And then, um, yeah, this is just a list of games that I've currently got installed that I'm going to have a try out of if I haven't already. 
But as you can see, I've got like a decent number of games on here. The scroll button doesn't seem to be working on my mouse very well. Oh no, wrong one. Um, and you can actually set which one is your preference. So you can make them default, so you can choose where to download different games to, but you can also move them across if you want to. It just takes a bit of time. Um, so I've got, you know, a good, like, selection of games on here. Most of, like, there's a lot of these that are verified, and most of the, and the other ones are playable. There's a couple of, um, I don't know what the, what the, the, the term is, um, un, unverified games so kingdom come deliverance is unverified for example total war three kingdoms as well um greedfall so i'll be looking at them seeing how well they play and you know if they if they do actually work or not it's not you know it's not a definite no it's a maybe that no one's tested it um and so far out of the few of them i have tested i won't spoil anything but out of the few of them i have tested it's gone quite well um, I tell you one game that did work particularly well. One of the first games I tried will be of no surprise, I'm sure, to some people. But Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord works incredibly well. Um, it's yeah something I can recommend. I'm sure I'll do some, have some footage of that uh, for you as well. So um, yeah, I also want to try and it's a bit off off topic, but I also want to try and compare uh, the performance numbers for on the hand handheld and like in docked mode as we are now. Um, and then there's home, so I've got loads of hidden games <laughs> as well. Um, you can add games to your library. I did this, but it didn't it didn't work. It kept giving me an error after I um, put, in, put in a CD key. Uh, and then I went onto my main computer to add in. It told me I'd already added it. So yeah, there was, it could just be a hiccup. I haven't tried it since, but just so, yeah, you're aware. Um, this is the developer uh, kit as well. A settings which I haven't had a chance to have a look through as of yet, so I'm looking at this for the first time. Um, just gives you a bit more control by the looks of it. Input layout dev mode, shows developer related menu options. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Um, that might be worth having a bit of a play around with. Try not to break anything, of course. Um, so yeah, there's your settings. Pretty, pretty um, thorough, I would say, in that regards. To be fair, all the stuff you want in there, I can't think of anything that I've looked for and struggled with. I guess the only, from me, slight annoyance is having to go into settings to look at my storage every time. Uh, when I want to see how much space I've got left, it doesn't always make it clear unless you don't have any space left. So there is that to consider. So in your library, it shows you your non-hidden games that um, fit whatever filter it is that you've set. So I think I've got the... I think the filter I've got set on is playable, yeah, playable, um, ver sorry, verified playable and unverified, so not the ones that have already been decided that they don't work uh, the minute on the current version of Proton. So it starts off by giving you, obviously you've got the one, all your ones that are installed. Oh, I don't have our one and our one, I'll have to move over on the mouse. And then all the games that, that fit that criteria as well. Shows you installed games first and then the ones that you haven't got installed after. And you can see it's got the little moniker over here with the, uh, it's got the question marks, that one's unverified. And basically, pretty much anything with uh, a tick or the orange exclamation mark actually does run pretty well. And obviously a lot of these games are set up for controller and that's, you know, that's the main thing, I guess. Um, it's interesting to see that Warhammer 2 is playable, but Warhammer 1 hasn't been verified it's uh, the bomber man baby and it's the bomber man baby apparently so thank you to whoever subscribed <laughs> it's caught me off guard um and then yeah i was going with that um so i presume that most of the total wars will work uh, obviously the Roman mass edition is for the is um for mobile so i would have a pretty good feeling about that one working and so far out of all of these the only one that i have tested so I did a little bit yesterday, is um, WRC 9, World Rally Championship 9, and yeah, that one I can't get past a prompt. So it's an on-screen keyboard prompt or mouse prompt, and the it's not recognising my touch, it's recognised my first touch screen input, which is fine, and then when you try to do it a second time uh, for initialising, it doesn't register it for some reason. So there's probably a quick fix there, and it's probably something that the Steam can probably do as well um, i'm just going through these just to give you a bit of a taste of where these games fit in um in terms of their verified status i'm surprised that steam hasn't looked into doom and doom eternal 
but uh, there's plenty of people online showing showing off Doom and Doom Eternal, or one of the two, working on the Steam Deck. So I got pretty good confidence in that working. Like I said, I got pretty com confidence in most things. It's just whether they work as intended, I suppose. So I'll give you a, a small spoiler as well: is that War in the North does work, but sometimes, but yeah, a bit funky. <laughs> so it's just stuff like that. But then it, it is unverified, and it's not likely to be verified either. And I think that's the thing to remember in all this as well. So yeah, and then if you only wanted to go with verified games your pool becomes much smaller. So on my uh, in my library, on my non-hidden games, of course, so there are probably some in my hidden games that will work, the number is a lot less. And, you know, Shadow of War does, but Shadow of Mordor doesn't. Witcher 3 does, but Witcher 3 doesn't, even though, you know, they're on, on console. So, yeah, it's basically, I think there's perhaps not been a big of a push from Steam internally, or Valve internally, I suppose, to verify a load of these games. I'm not sure where their criteria sits because a lot of the ones that are, or a couple of the ones sorry I've played that are playable seem to be like pretty much bang on like run better than some of the ones that are verified so uh, yeah I'm not sure whether it's a, a time constraint or whatnot but yeah don't let the the playable if something's classed as playable um don't let that put you off obviously you can use something like proton db to have a look for the games that you want to play and if they're unverified on here, but they're on Proton DB is working really well, then I've got pretty good, uh, pretty good feeling that they will they will work pretty well. You can also add non-Steam games as well, but I'm not going to go into that today. I have seen a video on that, and that's something that I want to look into doing. Um, but yeah, that's sort of not found in the scope of stuff I've been looking at at the minute. Uh, the store is the is the store. <laughs> it at least opens you up to the great on deck bit. But um, yeah, there's not really like a whole lot of anything, to be honest. I really want, I do want to try, or do want to play, sorry, Edge of Eternity. And I think that having the, the Steam Deck is probably a good good way to play that because, um, yeah, it's like some, some stuff lends itself to being played better on a, on a handheld when maybe you've got, a, looking for a different type of game. Witcher 3 is on sale for 4 99 at the minute. That's actually really decent. And yeah, you know, it gives you a good few suggestions, but uh, a lot of the big suggestions it's offering me, I already have. So uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's in terms of verified games, it's, we're, we're a bit niche, I guess, at the minute in terms of, you know, library support. But, you know, I get the point. They only want to advertise the ones that they've been able to verify. It makes sense. I mean, I wonder what the top seller is. Elden Ring, I guess, out of all those games. Yeah, Elden Ring, obviously, which three at the minute, God of War. And what even is Scarlet Nexus, Ark, Hades, Overcooked 2. It's the sort of stuff you'd expect. Oh, I didn't realize Horizon Zero Dawn was verified. I guess that makes sense. Once again, it's a console game. Um, and obviously, Boulder's Skate as well. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how this develops going forward in terms of how much effort Valve put into Verify, unless, or unless they'll just run on, you know, community feedback and stick stuff down as, as playable to get it out there. Um, you then got your friends list. Sorry, friends. <laughs> Being on video. Then got media, which is like your screenshots and, and stuff, I think. I don't think there's anything else. I've not done any screenshots on the Steam Deck yet. So, unfortunately, I haven't got that to show you, but I can show you Geralt on a beach. Um, and I can also show you the Eiffel Tower in Killing Floor 2. So, yeah, hopefully. Um, and Paris has seen better days, <laughs> even in real life. And then downloads, just your download page. So I downloaded the demo for Robin Hood Sherwood Builders, which I haven't had a chance to have a play yet. I've had that in my library for a while. And once again, testing stuff out on the Steam Deck, it seems quite nice to test out things that may be a little bit more niche also. Um, and then power settings, you just turn it off and that's it, it's done. Uh, but no, you can obviously switch to desktop, which I did uh, in the previous video. Restart the client, uh, restart the, the deck, shut it down, put it to sleep, all that sort of good stuff. Um, and that pretty much covers off the UI side of it. Um, I'm not going to be playing any any games in this one. I think that will probably I'll probably save that for uh, another video. But if there is any games that you want to see, whether I've got them or not, even if I've not got them, because they might be my hidden hidden part, let me know. Um, I'm happy to test out stuff. I'm particularly interested in the things that are unverified. And I think that's actually probably something else I can very briefly show you in live. 
I thought it was in library. There is a place where it shows you like your whole, um, your whole sort of like uh, account, and then how many games you've got that fall into different bits. But I have clearly forgotten where that is. So yeah, my apologies. I thought I thought it was in library. Um, although obviously I've got it quite heavily filtered anyway, which won't help, will it? So, in any case, yeah, um, there's something like 400 and something games that are, um, that won't work, and I've not actually tried any of them. Maybe it'll be interesting to see if I could actually download uh, one of the ones that are deemed not to work and see what happens. That might be a good experiment as well for the next video. Anyway, I've gone on for too long, but thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I say, let me know if there's anything you want me to test in particular, um, or just performance-wise. And I'll look to put that together in a video coming up soon. Anyway, have a good one. Stay safe. Bye for now.